Joining us this morning, Charles Schwab, Chief Investment Strategist uh, Lizanne Saunders is with us. Always great to see you, Lizanne. Uh, thanks okay. for being with us. I wonder, you know, ADP and JOLTS and the PMIs and the ISMs all this week, um, does it feel to you like we're in a moment where things are beginning to crack and that might get ratified tomorrow? Yeah, and, and not just those data points, but claims, and in particular, the pretty significant upward revision to last week. And, and we think of claims as sort of the leading indicator within the headline-type jobs indicators. And it is, it is relative to payrolls, as coincident unemployment rate as, uh, as lagging. But you can go to the leading, leading, leading indicators, and you can pretty much check all the boxes now. The first thing that happens is you see a lower number of job openings. We have seen that. It's, it's lag data from JOLTS. It's only through February. But then you see hiring freezes. We've seen plenty of those announcements. Then you see layoff announcements. Challenger in triple-digit territory year over year for five months in a row. You can check that box. Then you see the actual layoffs. Unique in this cycle is that they've been more top-down, you know, up the wage spectrum into the managerial sure. supervisory. And then it eventually feeds into claims and then payrolls and the unemployment rate. So, yeah, we are starting to see the dominoes suggest that the, the hit, frankly, that the Fed has kind of wanted in the labor market may be um, in front of us right now. Right. We mentioned in the intro uh, the, the rush to technology and the disparity between them and banks. How does that, how does that get resolved? Uh, does it mean that tech is the last man standing and, and that does create vulnerabilities for the indices? Well, some of the, the move to tech, I think, is muscle memory of many of those stocks representing the pandemic, the worst part of the pandemic era's defensive names. But that was all. There was a fundamental story there too, because they represented the ecosystem in which we were all living during the lockdown phase. Now, I think there, as some of it might just be the muscle memory of this is where you go when things are tougher. But there's also maybe a fundamental underpinning in the sense that, for the most part, these are been around a long time, well-capitalized companies that have cash flows and earnings in the here and now, don't necessarily need the traditional banking system or even the, the capital markets. But what we're seeing in terms of weakness in financials, I think there's no question you're going to need to see stability there for a real sustainable move in the market, not because financials have to lead us out of a bear market. It's not always the case. But the what it's representing in terms of constraints in the banking system, the likelihood that credit gets constrained even more than was the case pre-SVB, where credit conditions were in recession-level type tightening even then. So I think we still have to work through that. And a stabilization in financials would probably be that sign that the contagion is starting to be uh, limited here. So unique to this environment, I do think we're going to need to see some stabilization in financials. Yeah, it's such a key point, Lizanne, and certainly speaks to the health or maybe not so healthy nature of this rally. But it raises the question, even with the big run we have seen in these mega cap tech names, are they truly an area where investors should be putting money to work, given all the uncertainty right now? Well, I think you have to go sort of individual name by individual name and not make monolithic um, calls. Uh, you know, the, the common question is always, do you like tech or do you not like tech? And I always think, well, what within tech? You know, there, there are, and I don't cover individual stocks, but you could have in this giant, you know, sector of technology, you could have unbelievably well capitalized companies that have ample cash flows and lots of earnings and pricing power and, um, you know, strong balance sheet. And then you have companies that would be considered within tech that might be zombie companies with no profitability that might be on the verge of bankruptcy. So that's why I'll go back to you got to be factor focused and look for things like interest coverage and pricing power and strength of balance sheet and strong cash flows and apply that analysis or screening within it, within every sector and across all uh, segments of the market. I think that's a better way to approach than sort of making a monolithic call of yay or nay, at, particularly at the sector level.